In this video, we're going to start talking about some of the service aspects of refrigeration. We're going to talk in specifically about system recovery. All recovery machines are different. Make sure you read the operation manual for this machine you are going to be using. Using a machine in the wrong manner can cause equipment damage and personal injury. Please remember, safety glasses must be worn at all times while using recovery machines. It's very easy for you to get a refrigerant in your eyes and you do not want to do that. The three R's of protecting the environment are recovery, recycling, and reclamation. Refrigerant should be recovered from the system as a liquid. It's quicker and easier. Recovering as a vapor will take considerably longer. Refrigerant hoses should be of good quality and have good sealing gaskets. Check your hoses every once in a while and make sure that they're not leaking. Some recovery units require a warm-up period of up to 10 minutes. Not as frequent anymore, but it's, all, it's very important to read all information regarding the recovery units you are using. Recovery is defined by the EPA as to remove refrigerant in any condition from a system and stored in an external container without necessarily testing or processing it in any manner. Refrigerant recovered can be reused in the same system. Reco refrigerant that's recovered can be reused in a different system if owned by the same owner. However, you cannot take refrigerant recovered and sell it or give it to another owner. Per the EPA, refrigerant that has been recovered cannot be sold to another customer unless it meets new refrigerant specifications under ARI 700. Recycling refrigerant is defined as to clean the refrigerant by oil separation and single or multiple passes through devices such as replaceable core filter dryers. The filter dryers reduce moisture, acid, and particular matter. Recycling means to clean up the refrigerant. Reclaiming refrigerant is defined as processing refrigerant to a new product specifications by means that it may include distillation. This requires chemical analysis of the refrigerant. The refrigerant is processed to new refrigerant standards. Refrigerant that is reclaimed may be sold without hefty excise taxes. This is an incentive to save and reclaim old refrigerant. Reclaimed refrigerant is much less expensive than the newer refrigerants. Recovery techniques are, include active recovery, which uses a dedicated compressor in the machine to, remove, to move the refrigerant. It can be done in a system with a bad or missing compressor. Passive recovery is system dependent. It uses a system compressor, so that must be operational. Passive recovery uses the system's compressor to move the refrigerant. Piercing valves are sometimes used if there's no access fittings. You're required to recover refrigerant even in a hermetic, which is a sealed system with no access valves or fittings. When servicing a sealed system, you cannot just cut the pipe and let the refrigerant out. A piercing valve will clamp onto the line and allow you to recover refrigerant so the system can be serviced. Piercing valves are temporary and cannot be left on a system as they leak. Install a permanent valve by brazing it in when the system is empty. So for recovery, step one is to get all your equipment together. You need gauges, a recovery cylinder, a scale, and a recovery machine. Step two is to find how much, how much net refrigerant you're able to recover. So the weight of the container, which is called the tear weight, times 0.8 is 80% liquid level, plus the tear weight is the total capacity weight. WC and TW is stamped on the handle of the cylinders. Do not overfill. These cylinders can explode. So again, you have your weight WC, which is the weight of the contents, times 0.8. Okay, that gives you the 80% liquid level. Then you add in the tear weight to come up with your total capacitor weight. Tear weight is the weight of the container. WC and TW is stamped on the cylinder of the handle. Okay, if you go above 80% full, when the 
container gets hot while it's sitting in your van, okay, it can actually blow out the safety. And it's a pretty bad thing to have refrigerant all over the place. Okay, someone can get seriously hurt with this. Step two is to connect your gauges to the equipment. The red hose, your high side, goes to the high side of the equipment, the liquid line. The blue hose, for most often, the low side goes to the low side of the equipment, the suction line. Make sure all the gauge valves are closed. Connect the recovery machine. The middle hose, which is most often white or yellow, from your gauge manifold will connect to the inlet port of the recovery machine. There might be an additional, there's an additional hose that you'll need from the recovery machine to the liquid side of the recovery cylinder. Starting from the hoses connect to the equipment that you're recovering from, purge all the air out of the hoses. Once you get to the gauges, open both side handles and leave the valve and the valve that goes to the white hose if you have one. If you have an extra hose, leave that one closed. On the recovery machine, turn the inlet valve to on and the discharge valve to on. Bleed the air out of the line at the recovery cylinder. Open the valve on the recovery cylinder. Turn the recovery machine on and wait until all gauges show zero PSI. You can sometimes go as low as five inches vacuum. Don't go lower than that because you don't want to run that compressor in the recovery machine in a vacuum. Once the system is empty, close all gauge handles, turn off the recovery machine, turn off the recovery cylinder valve. Disconnect the recovery machine and cylinder and put them aside. Weigh the recovery cylinder and record the weight and the net refrigerant recovered. Recovered refrigerant cannot change ownership. Refrigerant must be reclaimed to change ownership. The refrigerant is the property of the person who owns the equipment. Recovered refrigerant cannot be mixed. Okay, in other words, if you have 134A, you cannot mix it with 22 or 410A. Each, must, each different flavor of refrigerant must be in its own cylinder. Recovery containers must be DOT approved, that's Department of Transportation, and are color coded gray with a yellow top. All newly manufactured recovery and recycling machines must be certified by an EPA approved organization to meet the requirements of the evacuation standards. Always evacuate the machine before each use. In other words, put it in a vacuum. You don't want moisture and prior refrigerant to be mixed with what you're recovering. When recovering 134A, use a machine dedicated to that refrigerant. The oil requirements are different. And by the way, 410A applies to this as well. Recover as liquid when possible. Most recovery machines will first get the liquid and then the vapor on their own. Now the system is empty, you can do whatever repair work you need to accomplish. Make sure that you do not leave any leaks or braze near your gauges while they are connected. Remove any Schrader cores when you're brazing. They're rubber and they will burn and then they won't seal properly. That's the recovery process. We'll now talk about, obviously, the leak checking, the evacuation, and the charging in further PowerPoints.